Now we head to FACET 5 in the eight facets of life. A quick web search for the word career results in over one and a half billion mm. results. Billion. It's a topic that touches all of our lives and too often can tilt our worlds out of control. We continue our series on the eight facets of life with a look at the topic of careers as Mark Koontz joins us again with Chris Conley. Well, sooner or later, we reach a point where maybe we have to make a career change or maybe we reach a point where we're just not happy with our career. How can we find balance when we reach those points in our life? We're joined now by author Chris Conley as we continue our look at the eight facets of life, a, some small steps to solving big problems. We've talked about personal development, family, relationships, and health, and now we're going to talk about career because, let's face it, career is something each and every one of us face, whether it's a career outside the home or inside the home, we all have different careers. Yeah, and it, for most of us, it takes some more of our time than any other. When it comes to a career, very rarely do you do the same thing for 40, 50, 60 years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, for a lot of different reasons, are hesitant to change, yet change is continually forced upon us. Yeah, I think it's, it's a big thing. It's, we have to embrace change. And it's not to say that all change is good, but we're not going to move on unless we embrace it. Because if we're more pleasant about what's happened, then we're going to be better to be around. Um, one stat that I had heard at one time was that 80% of college graduates aren't working in their degreed field 10 years after graduation. And I experienced this personally in my work where one of my bosses came out of college and he confided in me that I don't know whether to stay or not because I'm not using my education. And I couldn't really give him good counsel at the time because I didn't, we were about the same age. But he chose to stick it out and because he did, he rose through the company and you know he's about ready to retire now and much better for it. And even in your life, you, you look at your career, you've had to tackle many different uh, changes, many different aspects of your job, mm -hmm. and have always been able to do so with perhaps the right attitude. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I mean, I, I changed out of necessity at times because uh, my pay scale wasn't keeping up with, with what I needed. I went through a recession early on in my life, and, and I enjoyed my work, but I couldn't provide for my family. So I looked for work elsewhere and was fortunate to find it. And through all those internal job changes, again, I kept learning more things. And uh, it may have stunted my upward growth, but it kept me fresh, and uh, I enjoyed what I did. You talked a little about pay. That brings us to two other P words, pension and passion. And perhaps too often, we put the pension ahead <coughs> of the passion instead of letting the passion determine the pension. That's for sure. I think uh, a, a, another story I heard, 100 graduates were asked at their 20-year reunion, did you chase passion or pension? And the second follow-up question, have any of you attained a net worth of a million dollars? And 91 out of the 100 admitted that they took jobs that paid the most. And the follow-up question, zero had attained a net worth of a million dollars. So that left nine. Of the nine, eight out of nine had attained a net worth of a million dollars. And on the surface, that doesn't make sense. But if you stop and think about it, they were doing work that they loved. So over time wasn't an issue. Putting in more time for projects, they were being sought out because they enjoyed their work. They were more pleasant to be around. So they were giving promotions, special opportunities, and thus the pay came. So by seeking their passion, they actually outperformed the people that were working for the money. It's great if we can find a job that, that, that finds our passion. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have trouble with that. And I think a lot of trouble also stems from <coughs> people trying to define themselves by their career and not having maybe a, a bigger picture, which, which goes back to personal development. Right. Yeah. We are, again, we spend so much time in our work, it's easy to be defined by your job. But we have to realize that there are other avenues of our life, you know, other aspects, being the family and everything else that we've talked about thus far. And achieving that balance in our life goes back to making sure that you have a life outside of work and, mm -hmm. and finding other things to, to, to work harder on yourself than maybe you work on your job. Right. That's a, that's a phrase that maybe employers wouldn't like said. But it's not saying that you don't give 100% in your job because you always should do that. But the key aspect here is what are you doing with your time away from work? Um, because if you're just soaking up TV hours or social media hours, that's really not expanding you in any way. 
But if you're spending that time on, again, getting back to the personal development, how can I be better? That's going to have that ripple effect through these other areas of your life. And we've, we've talked about how mental health is so important, and, and that goes right hand in hand with career, making sure you have that positive mental attitude, which will also allow you to have perhaps a better physical health as well. And what other tips do you have for, for folks looking to, to achieve a better balance with career? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing I found, there is a guy that I've met personally, and he's got a website, 48days.com, and his name's Dan Miller, and he's a career coach. But he also talks about how our career affects every other aspect of our life. He currently lives in the Nashville area and teaches on this subject. But uh, he grew up in the Holmes County area as a Mennonite. And uh, he's a genius when it comes to career. And he's got a weekly podcast that I listen to and uh, a newsletter that comes out. And he gives away so much free information. If you're struggling with career, you got to look this, check this guy out. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. And speaking of teaching, Chris also teaches his eight facets of life as part of a workshop. If you're interested in bringing him in to discuss the eight facets of life with your group or organization, you can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com. And if you've missed any of our previous uh, entries in the eight aspects of life, they are available online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com.